This is Americana going to the jump site where Evil Knievel attempted to cross the Snake River. He wanted the Grand Canyon, right? Welcome to Idaho, baby. So we're here this morning with Andrew and his daughter Lily, and they're gonna give you a rundown of what we're gonna to do today in Southern Idaho. So we're gonna start off at Hagerman Fossil Beds. We're gonna see just a little bit, it's kind of smoky out today, so we're gonna just kind of see some of the fossils here and move on down the road. After that, we're gonna to go to Box Canyon State Park, which is a, I think it's like the 12th largest freshwater spring in the world. And it comes out of the, of the Snake River Aquifer, goes down the river there, so do a little hiking there. Then head over to uh, Twin Falls to the Perrine Bridge. That's where Highway 93 crosses the Snake River Canyon. And there's a lot of base jumpers. It's one of the only span bridges where you can legally jump off that bridge and, and, and see the parachute guys go down in there. And then after that, quick hike over to uh, the Evil Knievel jump site. We're in 1974, Evil Knievel tried to jump the Snake River Canyon and didn't make it. You can still see the, uh, the hill where he tried to jump off of. And after that, if we're not dead tired, we'll uh, check out Minidoka National Historic Site, which is where uh, the, uh, it was Japanese internment camp during World War II, and they restored a lot of stuff out there. So that's kind of the itinerary for today. That sounds like a full day. So let's get started. Okay, for our first stop here in Southern Idaho, we're at Hagerman Fossil Beds National Monument. Hagerman Fossil Beds is about uh, a lot of fossils from the Pliocene, and we are the richest Pliocene deposit in North America, and one of the richest in the world. So that's why we're here as a research facility to piece together the puzzle of the Pliocene in Idaho. It's a, a very long and fast snake. This is about five feet, four feet, four and a half feet long, this snake. This young man will get to swear you in as a junior ranger. How's that? Will that work? Yeah. What do you say to the man? Thanks. This is uh, Box Canyon, uh, part of Thousand Springs State Park unit in Idaho. And it's where uh, a bunch of water that comes from the Snake River Aquifer comes up out of the ground of the canyon and goes down into the Snake River from here. So we're gonna hike down there. The gate was only closed, right? Yeah, every time I've been out here, that gate's, I guess it's a Saturday. Oh, I never so, come on a Saturday. So they're uh, they're merciful to us on Saturdays, I we guess. Saved, huh? I saved a, a couple of miles of hiking by the Oh, that's down. nice. So we are at the canyon right now, and we're gonna hike down into the canyon, yep. about a mile down to the bottom. Yep. Okay, so out here at, at uh, Box Canyon, this is one of the largest uh, freshwater springs in the world. And the water goes into the ground several hundred miles from here up towards the Lost River Range in Idaho near Craters of the Moon and then it goes down underground goes through the aquifer works its way through the lava rock and takes about a hundred years before it'll reappear oh. out in the canyon walls around here. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. now down in the canyon and uh, are we looking out for rattlesnakes down here you ever seen any not down here not down here they're here aren't they yeah you've never run into any yet though down here yeah but they do live down here the most dangerous part right there would be poison ivy so wow, a lot of down here. what a huge patch of it, too. All right, buddy, mark that, all right? Poison ivy. What do you think the water temperature is? Cold. 
<laughs> it says it all. Oh, it's the only okay. clean, dry pair of pants I got left for the whole trip. They're about to get a lot cleaner and drier, they're, aren't they? They're going to get washed. Or wetter. Wow! <laughs> Welcome to Idaho, baby. I can't believe how crystal clear this water is. And I love the bluish tint to it from the minerals that come out of the spring. And as far as the temperature, we use the word refreshing here at America's Park. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, Shane, come on, buddy, let's go, man. Come on. Come on, Shane. Let's do it, man. It's not much different than it was at Crater Lake, or I mean at um, Grand Teton. Uh, About the yeah. same as Grand Teton. Those lakes, those are cold too. Oh, yeah. It's all glacier water there. This is the polar bear club right here. Whoa, Shane, the whole head went under. <laughs> Woo, where'd it go? Wanna come in? Yeah. I'll hold you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you almost get to the point, Andrew, where you uh, your body goes numb. Yep. And you don't, <laughs> you don't feel it. How you doing down there, guys? Good. Oh, here goes Shane. Look at that. Oh, wow! Way to go! <laughs> you did it, buddy. So we are now at stop number three, and this is a unique one, isn't it? It is. This is the Parian Bridge. It spans across the Snake River Canyon, and it's one of the only places, bridges in the world where you can, at least in the United States, where you can legally base jump, jump off of the bridge with a parachute and then down into the canyon. It's about 480 feet to the bottom. And as are today, we'll see at least one base jumper, you think? Yeah, we'll see. We'll probably see a couple of them out here. It's hot summer day, calm winds, they'll be out. We are on the Snake River. We wanted to see some base jumpers. We technically did. Literally, as we were walking up, two jumped off. We saw the very tail end of their jumps. The camera wasn't running, though. And we've been out here now for about a half hour, and there are no more base jumpers. So we might have missed out on that. But still, you can't beat that view. That's impressive. That's really impressive. They'll be out. So just as we were about to leave, we got a jumper walking out. We're going to hang out here for a little while. And like that, it's over, right? What's that, three seconds? Wow. That is three seconds of a serious Crazy. adrenaline rush, right? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Craziness. Yeah. That's a better word. So we see the jump site. To your right, Andrew. Right over there. And this was famous back in 1974, is that correct? 74, yes. So we got Evil Knievel, the classic jump over the Snake Canyon. Which ultimately ends in not happening. <laughs> but this site, I mean, I was about Shane's age when this happened. This is legendary. Right, yeah. I mean, everyone, we're talking cover of Sports Illustrated, was on, was everybody was here, ABC, live television. Wild World of Sports covered it. Yeah, it was, it was a big deal. They had the album networks were out here. People from all over the country were out here that converged on the town to, to watch it happen and it didn't happen <laughs> as planned. And from what I remember, the shoot deployed too early. It deployed, from what you, if you take the video and you look at it, it seems like it deploys right as he lifts off the tower. Right. So the, the, the controversy was, was a mechanical failure? Did it, did it come out prematurely or did Knievel panic and 
push the parachute button. And to this day, no one knows. Boy, what, 50 years later? Getting Nobody close knows. to it. 45 yeah. years Getting or so? Yeah. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. But I'm just thinking, 45 years ago, this was packed with people where yeah, we're standing were, right now. They were out across all this area out here was just was people in tents and people in RVs and about every every biker gang on earth was all converted out there. <laughs> it was it was like Woodstock 2.0. <laughs> And then you told me when the people didn't get what they thought they paid for and drove all the way across the country to see, uh, it got a little ugly. It got ugly. The, uh, the biker gangs uh, tore apart and burnt down all the, uh, the, uh, the porta potties that the city had built. Um, the taxpayers dime. Oh, no. So the local taxpayers didn't take too kindly to that. And uh, yeah, it just, they just kind of started tearing everything up because they felt like they'd gotten ripped off from, from the, uh, the show that was supposed to happen. A little silly, but this is uh, a part of American history here. This is Americana, going to the jump site where Evil Knievel attempted to cross the Snake River. He wanted the Grand Canyon, right? I, said, that's, I think that's, that's right, yeah. And the National Park Service said, get out of here. So he bought, he actually bought this land, right? He bought this land here off of somebody. They moved in a bunch of dirt. And the dirt mound we're looking at right here was basically the base for the ramp itself. Right, yeah. When we get up on top, we can climb up there. You can see the uh, there's still the concrete footings where the ramp attached to. But yeah, they had a big metal ramp that was, you know, almost almost vertical. So I'm saying the dirt mound is, what do you think, 50 feet maybe? Probably. And then the ramp was probably double or triple that, wasn't it? It was up there. Because you had to get the right angle to propel them all the way across this canyon. Right, yep. Wow. Over 70 different stunts and a world record of 433 broken bones. Wow. <laughs> How many bones are in your body? I have no idea. 200 and something, right? <laughs> That means, what does that mean? You do the math. You broke a few a few times. A couple, couple multiple times. There's the date. September 8th, 1974. We just saw a sign. The ramp was 180 feet on top of this dirt mound. And he didn't buy the land. He actually leased the land. The rocket left the takeoff spot at 300 miles an hour. It was great to meet you. This, I'm Mark. This is Cindy. Hey. <laughs> uh, was a preacher for 35 years. Just uh, kind of walked away from that. We're traveling the United States for two years, and we're looking for all the good in America. Right. When, you can find us at nomadsuni.com, and we have podcasts, about 45 of them out there. And check out Evil Knievel today. <laughs> The internet of his time. He sure yeah, was. Fantastic. Well, it's neat to meet you guys. Thanks for recognizing me and uh, and stopping. And thanks for right. your uh, your support of the channel. We'll see you online. We're glad you guys like America's Parks. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Hey, God bless you and be safe on the road out there. Okay, guys. God Thank bless. you. Take care. How about that? Meeting viewers of America's Parks halfway up the ramp of Evil Knievel's jump. They're nationwide, Andrew. I know it. They're everywhere. Got to work on the international following now. I think. <laughs> And here we are on the top of the ramp. Always incredible, like I said, to think about what happened at this point right here. Iconic. Imagine that man sitting in this rocket. The parachute would have went off right up there, kind of. Thing. Straight down. Thousands of people sitting out here. Thousands of people. These are the concrete footings that the uh, tower that the Sky Cycle was going to launch off of was right here. So that's what they bolted to. Well, you're kind of a daredevil yourself. You went back up top. Yeah. Why'd you do that? I wanted to slide down. After a full day, this is our fifth and final stop. And today we are at... Mendoka National Historic Site. In southern Utah. No, oh, Utah! <laughs> so from where we're standing right here would have been the front gate of the Minidoka site. And all out to this whole area, up along the canal, all this out here would have been all the blocks for all the uh, 
all the different barracks. They had they had gardens out there here. There's a they had a baseball field. Um, they even had um, stores. At one point, they were even trying to do like a little movie theater and trying to show movies. It was just kind of a little city yeah. out in the middle of the desert, but they were all behind barbed wire. So they were still prisoners trying to make it as as normal of life as they possibly could. So we're at one of the four entrances right now. You can see behind me, see the original foundation of the reception building over here. And then directly behind me, that's where the military police were stationed. And then over there is the entrance into the camp itself. Point of the signs, we have one sign that says 10,000 and one that says 14,000. Right, there's the discrepancy on the signs. I guess it <laughs> depends on, on your map. And yeah, who knows, they could have, it's kind of hard probably to gauge how many people did come through here, yeah. you know, just based on historical data and what they had of, right. of registries and stuff. So there may be some discrepancies on that. And these were Japanese Americans after the uh, Pearl Harbor bombing. After Pearl Harbor, there was a lot of a lot of hysteria about anybody of Japanese descent that they could be a spy for the enemy, or they could. What if the Japanese invaded the the, the coast and they would have all these allies? So it became kind of a big a big hysteria with with people that anybody of Japanese descent needed to be kept an eye on. So they were shipped out to camps all over the West, had to give up their livelihood, everything they had there and brought out in the middle of nowhere usually and had to had to find a way to survive. Yeah, they didn't give them the best of land, did they? No, no. Uh, so, so kind of a black eye of American history, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, it is. It's, it's a good, I think it's a good reminder of, of how easy it is for us to get worked up about something without really knowing all the facts. Yeah. Just just the, you know, the, 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 uh, the frenzy, the feeding frenzy of panic that can happen and, and, and sometimes the unfortunate results that can come, happen from that panic. Interesting, and we got 1942 to 1945, I believe. So it has been a full day here in Southern Idaho. I wanna thank Andrew and his family for showing us around. Uh, we hit uh, five key stops here in the lower part of the state, two of them being national park sites. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our channel and remember, there's always room for you on every national park adventure. Time to hit the barbecue.